I'm in my build machine. If you go into the services, you will find that Azure DevOps built agent running as a background service. Azure DevOps services was previously known as Visual Studio Team Services. And that's why you still have this VSTS name. At some point in time, Microsoft will probably change the name of this service as well. What we are going to do in this lab is to learn how to register a new build agent so you know how to configure your build pools. To register this built agent, what I did was I created a folder called built agent, copied some files that I downloaded from Azure DevOps server, and then ran this file called config. As part of this execution, I punch in some parameters, and that register this built agent with Azure DevOps services. If you go into Azure DevOps services, so this could be your lab environment, this could be your on-premises Azure DevOps server, or it could be even Azure hosted version. In this lab environment, I'm logging as my dev user. So let's go to admin settings, agent pools. The service that I showed a moment ago is now registered under AWS build pools. So this is that service running as a built agent. What we are going to learn here is how to register a new built agent with Azure DevOps. The idea is that you can run your Azure DevOps server in your on-premise environment. You can run it in Azure hosted way, but you can add a built agent running on AWS to do AWS deployment task. You can run the built agent in your on-premises environment, of course, and then uh, direct the deployments into AWS. But there are multiple ways that you can configure the built agent. So one way is to keep the built agent in AWS side. So let's see how to register a new built agent in this agent pool. To do that, first download the built agent by clicking this button. I'm going to download the Windows uh, version of agent pool. It gives me a zip file. And I'm going to unzip that. Let's create a new folder for this built agent that I'm going to register. So you can have multiple built agents in the same machine. So here I have uh, the previous built agent. So let's create a new folder for the new built agent that I'm going to register. Let's call it my built agent. Paste the zip file. Unzip it. Delete the unwanted file. Let's rename this one as my VSTS agent. So I'm going to go copy this folder path, open command line as an administrator, go to that folder, and then I'm going to run that config CMD file. So it asked me to give the server URL. So this is the URL of your Azure DevOps server. In this case, it's HTTPS div. If you are registering your on-premises instance, you give that on-premises uh, URL, provided that you have the network connectivity. If you are registering the Azure hosted version, uh, Azure DevOps services, you give that URL here. In this lab machine, I give HTTPS div where my Azure DevOps service is running. It asks for the authentication type we are going to use an authentication type called PAT or personal access token. Press enter. And then we are going to generate this personal access token from Azure DevOps side. To do that, 
go to Azure DevOps server. If you select your user, you need to have, of course, admin privileges, go to security. And then under personal access token, I already have an access token that I created for the already registered uh, VSTS agent or Azure DevOps agent. So let's create a new uh, access token. So I'm going to call that my agent access key. Expiration is one year. I can give fine grained permissions here, but this is a lab environment, so I'm going to give all scopes. Create the token. Remember to uh, copy this token and then save it at a safe place. So let's uh, open a notepad and then keep this because this is shown only once. Copy this access token and then let's punch in that into our command line. So it connects to the uh, server and it then asks to which agent pool that you want to register this agent. So if you go into Azure DevOps server, admin settings, and go to the agent pools, I already have two agent pools, AWS build pool and default. If you want to add a new agent pool, you can add it here. Let's say my Linux pool to register Linux containers or Linux agent pools. So let's delete this, we don't need it. So let's register our built agent under AWS build pools. You may ask why you need to have multiple built agents. Think of a development house with multiple developers. When they make changes and commit them, the build machine has to build multiple software in parallel. And that's the main reason why you usually have multiple uh, built agents under build pool. Also, imagine that you need to have certain tools installed in this built agent. Maybe uh, you want to build a Linux container and you need to run uh, this built agent in a Linux machine. So you can have multiple built agents with multiple capabilities to build your job. And that's why you have a pool of built agent. Let's register our built agent under AWS build pool. So type that AWS build pool and then press enter. Let's give it a name for this built agent. Let's call my built agent. And it's then going to scan the capabilities of this machine. So if it is a Linux machine, it will say uh, I can build Linux application. If you have .NET Framework installed, it will say hey, I have .NET Framework installed and I can build a .NET related task. So it informed the Azure DevOps server what are the capabilities uh, that this built agent has. Things like the operating system, uh, the Java framework or .NET framework install. The work folder is what it's going to use as a work folder. So where, that's where it's going to download the things. Do I need to run this service as a service? Yes, of course, I want to run it as a service. And then you need to give a username and a uh, to access that. So let's create a user quickly. Go to computer management, under local users groups. Let's create a new user. Call it my built agent user. Give it a password. Let's generate a strong password with a GUID. And then save the password in a way that will never expire. So I created the user. So let's this configure this user as my built user. So if you need admin privileges for this build task, when it runs build, you need to make sure that you add this built user to uh, the administrative group. So as of now, this built agent user is created uh, and I registered this service to run, that, uh, run as that built uh, user. So if I refresh this, I should be able to see my new service, my built agent registered as a service, and it runs as my built agent user. Back in Azure DevOps agent pools, if you look at AWS build pool, you can find that the my new built agent is already registered. 
So the next step, of course, is to make sure that this built agent is working. So let's first disable the already registered AWS built agent one, and then enable my built agent as the only one available. Go to your built test. This is there just to test your builds. Under pipelines, let's queue a new build. Select the agent pool as AWS built pool. We know that our newly registered agent is under this pool. And let's queue a new one. So if you go into your executing build, you will find that it's executing certain steps, but at some point in time, it will fail with a certification error. So let's see what's the error that it's going to give. So it tried to connect into JIT and then it gave an error saying that unable to connect into JIT repository. If you explore this carefully, it's a certification error. And if you ask why you get this certification error, while the browser itself says that this uh, certificate that I have for my uh, Azure DevOps server, which I have locally installed is valid, is because this is a self-signed certificate. The browser thinks it's a valid certificate because I have added this certificate into Windows Certificate Store as a trusted certificate. If you go into your certificate manager and under trusted root certificates, I have added the due certificate as a valid certificate. And that's why the browser thinks it as a valid certificate. But it does not necessarily mean that the JIT of this built agent thinks this certificate is a valid certificate. The reason for that is that Azure DevOps built agent has its own version of JIT. So if you go into uh, the folder where you copy this built agent, if you go to the extension folder, you will find that there is a separate JIT executable. So when the built agent runs to get the source control from the Azure repository, it uses this JIT executable. And this JIT executable has its own certificate store. So it's not going to use the Windows default certificate store. So if you go into this special folder uh, under JIT called MIGM and then go to SSL certificate certs. So there is a CA bundles or certificate bundles that this JIT uses to validate the certificates. So let's take a copy of this certificate bundle and we are going to add the certificate uh, from here. So the first step is to export the certificate. So select that certificate button, go to certificates, go to details, copy to a file, click next, base 64 encoded X509 certificate, click next, uh, go to your desktop and then export this certificate. So I'm exporting this certificate from my Chrome browser as a base 64 encoded X509 certificate. Save it. So once you save it, you can open this certificate in Notepad++ and then copy this thumbprint of the certificate. And then we are going to add this thumbprint into our certificate bundle in that special folder. So open this certificate bundle in this special folder with your notepad plus plus, go to end of that file and then paste the certificate uh, that we got by exporting from our Azure DevOps server. So I added my self-signed certificate. Now the JIT thinks that this is a trusted uh, certificate. So let's queue a new build just to make sure that it's not keeping any uh, cache version. Let's stop the service and then start the service again before we queue a one. So let's queue a new build to check what happens uh, 
now after adding our self science certificate into the self uh, to the certificate bundle so you'll find that now the checkout is successful and finally the build will be successfully executed in this new built agent so what we learn here is how to register a new built agent uh, make some modification into the certificate bundle to make it a valid certificate and you can find that this built agent successfully executed all the steps and the checkout from the zip repository also successfully executed you can find that uh, if you go to see built agent this is where the working folder is so we configured this work folder when we can ran that config file so this is where the build happens so when it check out the files from the source control, when it copy in the files into staging, it uses this work folder. So if it is uh, uh, the built agent of uh, that we have already registered, it will use this work folder to do the build operations. So in my built agent, I have this special work folder that will use as a place where it copies files, where I do the JIP uh, uh, cloning, uh, where it builds a one. So the binaries get copied here, for example, as part of this .NET build process, you can find under release, the .NET Core assemblies got uh, created. So everything that it does, does under this work folder. I'm back in my Azure DevOps server. If you go to the admin setting and agent pools, you can find that there are two agents already registered. We can keep this agent running, but let's try to understand how to remove these agents once you register one. To do that, go to the folder where you have uh, installed this agent. And like before, uh, go to that folder, open command line, and then type config. When you type config, it will say the agent is already registered. So what you need to type here is config remove. So this will deregister the agent with Azure DevOps Server. So if you go into uh, your agent pool, you can find that my built agent is marked as red. So press the cross sign to remove it permanently. Then let's go there and then inspect uh, our services to check whether it has been properly removed. So if you look at the services, you can find that uh, build service is no longer running. Let's go into my C drive and then delete this my built agent folder because we no longer need that. Finally, go to security and remember to delete the access key that you created. You can find that uh, the agent pool uh, now has only one agent. So in this lesson, we learn how to register a new built agent, find ways to overcome certain errors that it gave when it tried to register, and then finally uh, deregister the agent from Azure DevOps Server.